we watch the weather really close. And what, what I've seen in, in the, the 30 some years that I've been farming in, in this community is that the, uh, we, the average amount of rainfall in our temperatures hasn't really changed that much but it's the extremes that have changed so much. The extreme high temperatures, the extreme low temperatures, the extreme years of rainfall where we may get 40 inches of rain. And in 2011, there were weather stations out here that recorded zero inches of rain. You know, scientists have been pursuing answers to climate science for more than 50 years. When we started, a lot of what we were talking about is the types of changes that could happen in the future, but we really hadn't been able to document a lot of the impacts beyond the changes in temperature and atmosphere composition. But now, we are beginning to be able to document those impacts. We've been studying the climate for a long time, and we've been studying how the increases in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases have affected the climate. And this, the consensus is clear that our activities are causing the climate to warm, and that that is leading to a whole range of other impacts on our climate system. Our, our ancestors that were here before me, my great-grandfather and his father, you know, when they started irrigation, they did the best that they could, but, but honestly, they wasted more water every day than we can pump out of the aquifer right now. Climate change will affect Texas differently depending on what part we live in. If we live along the coast of Texas, then we're concerned about sea level rise, stronger hurricanes, and even worsening air quality as the air warms. If we live up in the northwest part of Texas where we do, here we're more worried about our rainfall. Our rainfall here in Texas already is extremely variable. It's feast or famine. We have droughts and we have floods and we have everything in between. El cambio climático global ya es una realidad. Lo estamos viendo pues con toda serie de mediciones. Por ejemplo, la temperatura promedio de la superficie del planeta pues ha aumentado ya 0.8 grados Celsius, o sea, un, un, uno y medio grados Fahrenheit. Es algo que ya está ocurriendo. Y también empezamos a ver toda una serie de cambios en el clima, frecuencia de inundaciones, sequías, ondas de calor. Es una realidad. The effects of climate change on people's health are going to be different in different parts of the country, different regions, different states, coastal, inland, heat waves, extreme heat, air pollution events, wildfire, flooding of rivers and coasts, aero allergens, in terms of what's happening now, all of this is happening now. I was born, raised in New York State, I live in New York City now. And the effects of climate change today in New York State and the Northeast are quite significant. Drought is a feature of life in California just as it is in Texas. But climate change is interacting with those natural patterns, exacerbating the risks that we already face today. Muchos Latinos Eh, eh, aquí en Norteamérica, en Estados Unidos, pues viven en ciudades que son eh, vulnerables. Por ejemplo, la Florida. Si realmente sube el nivel del mar, pues una parte de la Florida, la más poblada, se inundaría. River flooding, coastal flooding, the kind of flooding that flooded the hospital in which I was born in Binghamton, New York, to the first floor. It's been projected that by 2100, even a a milder storm, a less intense storm than Hurricane Sandy that could cause the same extent of flooding could happen every other year, every other year by 2100. We can tell people all of the facts, all of the data. We can cite this journal article, that report. But what we've learned from the social science is that's not what changes people's minds. What changes people's minds is connecting this issue of climate change to things that people already care about. The farmer is the ultimate steward of the land. I want this land to, this land was here, you know, you know, three generations ago for my family. And I want it to be in as good a shape or better than it is now in three generations ahead of me. I want this to last. I want it to be sustained for generations to come. These impacts are really serious. You know, climate science matters for our planet. It matters for our nation. It matters for my children's future. You know, it's really important that we get the science right and that we communicate it to the people who can make the um, appropriate decisions in the best way that we possibly can. The future is not an abstraction. It is the place where our children are going to be living and contending with issues that are greater than the ones that we have to face. And our decisions really matter. 
we need to step up, rise to the occasion, and think about what actions, informed by science, in, informed by the body of evidence, we will take to make sure that their futures are healthy, secure, and stable. <laughs>